if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. We've got to get the children connected to their parents. The children are suffering. Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California on Saturday there urging people to confront members of President Trump's cabinet where they see them, when they see them in public over this child separation crisis. And the moment she said that, many even loyal Democrats moved very quickly to call that a bad idea and an equally bad precedent in the discussion we're having over civility or the lack of it in our politics. For one thing, it gave a huge opening to the president who said this today, quote, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, an extraordinarily low IQ person, has become, together with Nancy Pelosi, the face of the Democrat Party. The president goes on to write, she has just called for harm to supporters, of which there are many, of the Make America Great Again movement. Be careful what you wish for, Max. Earlier tonight, Congresswoman Waters replied to the president's tweet during an interview on this network with Chris Hayes. I did not call for harm for anybody. The president lied again. As a matter of fact, I believe in peaceful protest. All of this is an issue, of course, because of the Trump administration officials who have been publicly confronted in just these past few days. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked to leave this place, the Red Hen Restaurant in Lexington, Virginia, Friday evening, because she worked for the president. Last week, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen was heckled by activists while trying to eat at a Mexican restaurant in Washington. And the New York Post reporting White House advisor Stephen Miller was called a fascist, among other things, at a different Mexican restaurant, we note, in Washington. And on Friday, Trump ally Pam Bondi, Florida's attorney general, was confronted by demonstrators at a movie theater in Tampa. With us for more on all of this, two bra very brave people, Michael Steele, former <laughs> chairman of the Republican National Committee, and Nancy Cook, White House reporter for Politico. We welcome them both back to our broadcast. Uh, Michael, I've been asked about this all day, so I will now neatly transfer the question <laughs> to you. Yes, what sir. if someone else had been thrown out of a restaurant for reasons, say, including religion or the color of their skin? And what if during the Obama era, a Republican member oh. of Congress Congress had gotten up and say, wherever you see these people, surround them and confront them. I know it's whataboutism, but right. take on the question. No, I, I think it's very much uh, that kind of reality check, you know, because we know life would have been very different, the outcome would have been very different, and the responses would have been very different. But here's the point. The, for me, the big takeaway take from what Maxine did, the Congresswoman did, was she stepped in it. Uh, and she stepped in it trying to do Trump. And the only person who can do Trump is Trump. Uh, and that's what's so unfortunate about this, is that it is a space unto which only he occupies it, and it's a space in which uh, others, kind of revolving around it, protect this president in that, re in that response. What Maxine did, when you consider all the other stuff that has gone before it, is consistent with what's been going on in the country. But the reaction to her, that she's the one that should be civil, now everybody wants to have a civil discussion, belies the fact that it is that the leader of the free world, the, the president of our nation, who opened this Pandora's box during his presidential campaign, in which he called out members of the audience. He did, responded with laughter when he saw uh, his audience go after individuals. Um, so this is a space we're now in, and how we adapt, Brian, and how we adjust to it. The onus is not just on folks like Maxine Waters or you or me. The onus is on the president as well. And that's where the change of behavior really has to come. We just can't sit back and point fingers at everybody else and say, y'all need to be civil. Oh, but he doesn't. Y'all need to change the way you speak about these issues, but he doesn't. How you refer to other people, but he doesn't. This is a two-way street, baby. You got to get on it just like we do. And pushing back 
should be recognizing that responsibility and accountability on the behalf of the president to cut out the act that he's doing right now as well. Nancy, a friend of mine, a longtime loyal Democrat, said today, leave it to us Democrats to be handed the high ground for one weekend <laughs> and drop it and break it. Another way of putting it, people said today that uh, uh, Maxine Waters opened the door for a huge White House talking point to come out. Is that what you're getting? Absolutely. I mean, I think that she just gave the White House a huge gift so that they could run away from yeah. much more damaging stories like the separation of migrant children and families, uh, DHS's plans to reunify those families. That has been a brutal story for this White House, and there's been tons of internal tension over that policy. And basically, this allowed Sarah Huckabee Sanders in the briefing, in addition to getting a lot of questions about that, to try to turn this into a conversation about civility and for Trump and all those people to basically lean back on the cultural issues, which has so uh, played for them so well politically in 2016, play that cultural hand instead of answering much more specific questions about the policies that they've put forward. Right. Michael, you mentioned some of the comments you might have heard Donald Trump make on the campaign trail. I, we happen to have thrown together a few of those. We'll talk about it on the other side. If you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. Okay? Just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees. I promise. The guards are very gentle with him. He's walking out like big high fives, smiling, laughing. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. All right, yeah, get him out. Try not to hurt him. If you do, I'll defend you in court. Don't worry about it. So, Michael, um, as the former head of the party, he is now the titular uh, head of. Yeah. Um, no chance he's a victim or a symptom. You find him the cause of this conversation we're having now about it, civility? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. But just look at the, the, the tweet that in response to the congresswoman. You know, low IQ, you know, be careful what you wish for with a threat at the end of the tweet. So don't, you know, I, I, I get, you know, Maxine stepped in it, like I said at the beginning, and she opened up a door. Um, that we're now talking about what she did as opposed to how the president um, has handled and behaved in these situations, and specifically with respect to these children. So that, that little vignette that you shared with us, again, I think tells us what the truth is and, and where the origins of a lot of, the, a lot of this lies uh, and why we now should be of a mind to say, wait a minute, ho, this is, hold up, this is a two-way street here. You don't just get to, to look at others and go, you can't say this or do this or behave a certain way. We're also watching how you're behaving and what you're saying, and that is unacceptable, particularly given the position you have as president. Nancy, I looked up at uh, Fox News tonight. At one point, the graphic was intolerance on the left. And about the left, uh, the Pelosi-Schumer types are going to have to get in here because enough people are saying, okay, what about legislation? Yeah, I think that basically this just, you know, puts Democrats on the defensive and, and makes them respond to Trump really on his own terms. And as Michael said earlier, really the only person that does Trump well is Trump. And this makes the Democrats just play uh, into his hand. I think the other thing politically is, you know, the Democrats had really hoped to take the high road heading into 2018. Uh, you know, they'd hoped to talk about a bunch of, uh, you know, pocketbook issues and turn to that, uh, whereas instead they're sort of going back this tit for tat between Maxine Waters today and President Trump, and that's not really where they want to lie. And this is also what Republicans wanted. You know, they want the Democrats to uh, what they call pl overplay their hand heading into 2018, so that even if the Democratic base is really fired up for 2018, they'll overplay their hand so much that it will turn off more moderate and independent voters right. in the presidential election in 2020. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.